uh, welcome to our uh, television uh, presentation of the Ramble. Now, uh, you, you show them, show them where you uh, take a, take the uh, take a camera, camera off use. again, we'll, and, and yeah. show them where the uh, where the soundproofing is. See, because yeah. people can uh, see uh, this. Let's see where I'm. Yeah, uh, there we go. There we go. There's the soundproofing, and here's where the, the rest of your soundproofing right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well. I have two boxes, just like you, plus some extra mm -hmm. ones that wouldn't fit into those boxes. Mm -hmm. And uh, eventually what I'll do is um, uh, have a, uh, something made to apply the soundproofing to. Yeah. But because I'm in a rental uh, now, I, I can't just put it on the wall. Oh, I see. Okay. Well, I just use thumbtacks. I just thought for soundproofing, I just put it around my head like this. <laughs> yeah. And uh, or here that's the, the new the, sound sombrero. The sound sombrero. Yeah. Now, do I, do I, Damien, did they send you a sound <laughs> sombrero? <laughs> no, I, I, I like you, it's still on back order. Oh, okay, <laughs> yeah, now, very nice. Of course, over here tonight is there she is, wave. Hey, girlfriend, hi, see, there, there's the girlfriend, and she always says, I never hi. put her on, so he you doesn't. know, she's on. What? What do you mean? I, I you know he, he doesn't have meters either on his board. Yes, I his do. His board has lights. Yes, all, that's meters. Well, you know, I got meters, but it, they barely uh, uh, here. I, 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 I'm sorry. I can. I can. Here are yeah. my lights. Here. <laughs> Look here. at his box. I See, know. Uh, He's yeah, planning on recording an album. Everybody, show us your board. That's right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but there's mine, and yeah, you can see that right over here. They're going up and down, right? Yeah, well, that that's what, what. What do you mean meters? Where's yours? See how what, tiny uh, mine is. Uh, Mine's right tiny. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm on the wrong side. It's backwards. When you when you when you do it through the camera and you look at it, yeah, it, what's left is left, and what's right is right. My video. So my meters. Well, everybody are over just here. got frozen for some reason. Yeah. Yeah. Oh well, oh, that's that's the power of our meters. Yeah. So <laughs> people who are watching this on TV, all of a sudden, they're seeing a frozen screen. There we go. Now everybody's back again. Uh, yeah. Anyway, um, so uh, where was I? Oh yeah. So um, it, it's nice to know you have a wonderful thing going for you there, Phil. <laughs> What do you mean? Oh, well, my yeah, soundproofing yeah, or the board? Yeah, well, the, the board. The board. How many? How many channels? Twenty-four channels. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I, and how I many have so. you ever used? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, five. Five. Why five? I only use one, two, three, four is the most I've ever used. Five. Well, uh, there's three. two mics. If one, two, three, four. Oh. Right. Well, you got. Uh, Don't two start mics. up with me, lady. <laughs> Um, with the Behringer, you have to reroute the reverb through a channel, otherwise your uh, built-in effects won't, uh, won't work. Uh, so uh, one of the channels is used for uh, the reverb effects. Uh -huh. and, oh, and, uh, that's wonderful. The other one is the uh, Skype uh, input. Uh -huh. uh, and then uh, the other one is uh, the second computer uh, effects soundboard, yeah. which you won't let me use. No. <laughs> because you because you're annoying with it. Uh, well, hey, is anybody else going to? I'm, I'm annoying without it. So it, what's it, what's the difference? Is, is anybody else <laughs> going to call not until you have a reason to use it? Hello, Mark. Well, hello, Alex. How are you? Oh, uh, listen. Uh, let me let me. Uh, I haven't done this. I have to go back uh, on the TV and uh, put everybody on the screen together. Oh, and here comes Tony. Tony. Hello, Tony. Oh, how you doing? Hold on. Wait a minute. Yeah, Wait. yeah. Then what were you going to say, uh, Doc? The last person executed in Australia was Ryan, uh, Ronald Ryan. In sorry, in 1967, for executing a for killing a prison officer during an uh, during an escape from prison. Oh, okay. All right. And after that, there was not a single execution after that, and um, the sentence was um, appeal uh, repealed in 1985. Oh, really? Okay. I think uh, killing of a police officer or a uh, guard should uh, garner the uh, death penalty with, without exception. Why? Uh, because, uh, you know, if somebody knows that they're going to be uh, summarily executed, that uh, why? they should... Why, uh, why, 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 why should, should a policeman 
life be any more important than mine? Because they're doing a job to... Uh-huh. Uh, and, what, and, and I don't carry a gun, and I don't have a two-way radio, and I don't have bulletproof vests, and I don't have uh, all, the, all the, the, the tear gas thing, and I don't have any of that crap. Uh, but my life isn't worth as much as a cop who at least has all the ability to protect himself. A, a cop, cop is a target. Knew what he was doing. He put himself in that position. You, that's, uh, that's part of the job. They're not any better you, than you us. Have to, you have, it's not a matter of better. You have to have some sort of uh, deterrent uh, that uh, it costs more. Uh, to, some to kill oh, oh, so, 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 in other words, if it, some guy gets crushed by his his forklift at work, you know, and it was oh, it was a dangerous job, and he, you know, he cho- he chose to do that, and that was part of the job. That was the risk he took when he took accident. that job. That's an accident. So it's well, cheaper. It, it, so it's cheaper to kill me than it is to kill a cop. In other words, you might not uh, get the death penalty if you kill me, but if you kill a cop, you definitely get the death penalty. So death how penalty. my life isn't worth as much as a cop's. Ah. Uh, no. Well, then fuck you. <laughs> because my <laughs> life is, you know. Why not defense personnel, then? Huh? Their jobs, what about defense, the killing of defense personnel? It's, they're equally uh, doing the same job that the police they're are. Not in the, they're not in the private sector. Not, well, they're, the not, they're in the public sector, but they're uh, they have actually put themselves in harm's way. Well, Cops what about job EMTs? Isn't necessarily there? to put yourself in harm's way. Mm-hmm. We don't yeah, do it EMTs. for EMTs, right? Or nurses or doctors, and they get attacked and killed left, right, and center. Uh, that didn't sign up not, to be not more like cops. I mean, there's work. there's thousands of cops that. Uh, All I'm killed. saying is that cops no have I have more it. protection, more more things built in to protect them than I do to protect me. As a matter of fact, police even aren't out there, and you're going to hate me for saying this. They aren't mm-hmm. out there really to protect me. They're out there to protect property. If if there was a crime uh, that had been, that was taking place uh, uh, against you or against uh, uh, Marjorie. Uh, a cop would intervene to save you mm-hmm. if they were and around. And for years in my neighborhood, they weren't even around because there were uh, because there wasn't enough property to protect. There weren't enough white people to to, to protect. You know, the, the, the property issue is uh, is a service that they provide uh, so that you can claim uh, your losses to the insurance company. No, no, no. You don't know what I'm talking about. The fact is that police most of the laws protect property; they don't protect people. Uh, I don't know. There's there's a, there's a lot of laws that protect people. Like, uh, it's 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 uh, it's a crime to murder. It's a uh-huh. crime to uh, yeah. at- attack someone or hit them over the head or rob them or, uh, you know. Uh, oh wait a minute! Wait a minute! Rob, well, robbing them is stealing. Car. No, robbing them is protecting property. I'm saying good night, folks. Good night. No, burglary is protecting property. Robbery is when you forcefully take something from someone's uh, possession. Mm. Uh, and so, if you put some, good night. So, if you put somebody in a position where you're forcefully taking something from them, uh, that that that's more an invasion into your personal space. Yeah. Well, all I'm saying is, I I just I guess I just feel this whole thing with the oh the police have to be protected. Come on, you know, yeah. give me a break. You know, they've well, got all the protection yeah. in the world, and I'm out here. Uh, fighting for my life, and the cops always get here too late. Well, uh, they've smelled your bathroom before. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hi there, Matt. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Good. Well, how's your life going? Uh, you haven't been calling as much. Which, I know, which se- swimmingly. You, you, uh-huh. ha- you haven't been calling as much lately, which leads me to believe you're now excessively pussy whipped. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, he's a homeowner. <laughs> no, she's, uh, yeah, and she's on her bachelorette weekend, so. Oh, I, I got, see. So you can. I got the whole place to myself. Oh, good. Now, and you can do things that you can't do when she's there. Obviously, like right. masturbate. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I've already done it ten times. Then. <laughs> <laughs> At his age, he can. <laughs> uh, and hello to Mark Green, who has joined us this evening. Hello, Mark. Hello. How do you feel about what we were talking about there with uh, with uh, uh, the cops and you know death penalty. Death I mean, penalty. I, I don't. I don't think. I mean, Phil. Phil puts them in a in a higher. You know, like it's like the Indian caste system that they have a higher <laughs> status in in society. But I don't think so. They just have they have a job to do. I mean, uh, 
we don't we don't uh, just because people put themselves in danger doesn't mean that they their life is more precious than anybody else's. That's my sense. You of have things. to have a deterrent. Uh, no, but to, that, uh, how, how's that a deterrent? If you you know, have you ever heard of like uh, death by cop? People go out and try to shoot cops yes, just so the cops absolutely. will shoot back and kill them. Absolutely. Because, you know, the cops don't ask questions. They just shoot. They don't even go. Why don't they That's, shoot? It's not true. Why don't you well, shoot? Well, why don't well, you Why don't you guys shoot for the legs? Why do you always have to shoot for a vital organ? You don't organ? need to shoot. Huh? See, if you shoot for the legs, it's not. Uh, you're not going to necessarily stop the threat. You only go to deadly force if you have to stop the threat and you have to stop it completely. It's called deadly force for a reason. So what, 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 what about that cop that was shooting that guy who tried to run away the, uh, down in, uh, where was it, Shitty South shot, Carolina? Yes. Yeah, why not Shitty shoot shot, the leg? nine shots, six of which hit his body. Yeah. Yeah, I, and the guy was dead, obviously. Oh. You know, this had, I think it was the taser that got no, him. No, all the time I hear about them shooting a guy, guy uh, you know, it goes a little crazy. They shoot him dead. And I'm going, you, you didn't have to shoot him dead. You could shoot him in the leg. You, you know, that certainly you shoot somebody in the leg, that's going to stop if, them. If somebody has a gun or uh, some sort of weapon that puts you in imminent danger or bodily harm, you want to stop the threat. You don't want to uh, okay, delay. Boy, his, boy. Uh, this is all cops. Through. This is all cop school stuff. The, the fact the, is, there's, there's fact is far too many. How that, about that little kid who got killed because they thought he had a gun because he had a toy gun? Right, and it didn't have the white tip. Uh, oh, what, gee, what well, about his the parents letting him run around with something that looks yeah, like? Oh, a, yeah, a oh, yeah, yeah. Blame it all on the family. Blame yeah. it on the. Blame it on everything else but the cops who shot the kid dead. I tell, I tell you, when I was, I was a little kid, we had we had toy guns, and, and I never heard of something called the white tip. Well, that's that's a that's a, re, a this, this relatively all... new uh, uh, a new thing because uh, these replicas didn't look so real when you were a kid. When I was a kid, I had a gun that looked very real. Yeah, and and it made little sparks when you pulled the trigger. Yeah, and and so did the, and what did this one do that this kid had? It looked like an AK-47. Oh, I see. It looked like an AK-47. Yeah, and, 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 and very, very real. Oh, I see. And, and a little kid would be walking around with an AK-47. I came down on a guy when I was on duty. I was in a like a 7-Eleven type of store, and uh, we were in there for some other reason. And then all of a sudden, I saw a guy with, a, with a, a gun in his waistband. I drew down on him. I put him down on the floor in a felony-prone position until we you know, figured out what was going on. And it was a replica. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if the guy would have pulled it out and pointed it at me, he would have been dead. Yeah. Hello, Patrick. You're quiet. Yeah. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait, hold on a second. What, what Patrick? Wait, 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 wait a minute. Hold on a second. Let me, Patrick, what were you saying? I said because I think you're all full of shit except Phil on this one. Oh, okay. Uh, oh well, I, I, I've been had on this one. I've been, I've been served my notice, the Patrick notice. Yeah. Um, why am I full of shit, Patrick? I, why, I is, why, why is my life? Why is my life just not as important as a cop's? Alec, I don't. I don't have anything to add to Phil's argument. Phil has articulated it perfectly. Mm. Everything he said, I agree with, and there's nothing to add. I mean, but if you repeat it, it, it burns up a little bit more showtime. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think you got me on that one too. I got, I've been served tonight. Yeah. Uh, hello, uh, Tony. Oh, how you doing? I brought a book to show you if you want Tony to see. Tony has some. interrupt the conversation. Well, with. let's break up our little conversation with. No, some it was this comic book night? With, it was well, just one. No, I don't no, want to. No, Tony. I, I just I had the Raza Ghoul I was going to tell you about. The first what is this Raza Ghoul thing. Roger, well, he 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 is an enemy of the police. He is uh, the head of the League of Assassins. You can see it. Ah, there you it's go. It, it's it, the is it a real person or is it one of the uh, these um, mythical creatures that you guys no, this, read about? This is his first appearance in Batman two ninety two thirty two. There's Roz. He's no, shooting Batman here not, by not, Neil Adams. That's a cool cover. Yeah. yeah well, you see, when, oh, okay. it, when you hold it in front of your screen, oh, all sorry, we see is we see the screen. But if you were to turn it kind of at an angle. Yeah. There yeah, we there go. It now, now, a little more of an angle. A little more of an angle. Yeah. yeah there. Right. No, a little okay. less. less angle. Hey, there you e go. E either way, just, you know. It's one of my favorite covers, Alex. I like how he drew it, Neil Adams. They yeah. don't draw covers like this anymore. Yeah. Batman Robin, he dies. Yeah. yeah well, but he's trying to kill. I don't remember the story. He boils like, the ending there. 
But I like the green. I like how he drew Roz in green like that. It's really cool. Yeah. I went to a comic show once. I asked him. He just totally disregarded me, really. Oh, really? <laughs> to be honest. I was like, I like how you drew him in green like that. He's like, yeah, right. Like, he wants yeah, to get yeah, the same question. One of the 8,000 I did. You know. <laughs> yeah, he probably don't even remember doing it. He uh, didn't draw him in green, but the guy uh, you bought the book from did. I just... <laughs> I just <laughs> now, let me ask you a so question. Okay, Roz Agul is, is a major... Uh, uh, um, seminal character in Batman, right? Because he's the uh, head yeah. of the League oh, yeah. of Assassins. In the seventies, he really was. It, he's that brought a, ba Batman back. The head of the League of Assassins, and now they use the character on uh, Arrow, uh, on the TV show, uh, Raja Ghul. And, and Raja you know, Ghul was played by his... by Liam Neeson in the first yeah. uh, Christopher in Nolan that. Batman movie. Um, but my question is this: So you've got the first, the comic book. This yeah, is first, his first appearance. His first appearance. How much is that worth? Oh, this one. All right, this one is the CGC nine two. I would say this book, if I had, if I was going to sell it now, mm -hmm. I'd probably take a minimum of nine hundred to a thousand for it. Wow. Yeah, I've had this for a long time. So I, remember, I bought this in the late eighties, early nineties. I was looking for it for a long time. Now, where do you keep those things? So down the road. <laughs> I looked for a lot of copies, Alex. And when I used to go to shows as a kid, a lot of the copies I came across had the date stamp on the cover. Mm -hmm. And I didn't like that because it kind of defaced the cover. So this one doesn't have a date stamp. I bought it raw because they weren't great. So it's what you call that. mint. And I really looked at it, but I bought it on the one condition I remember. I told the guy, I'll buy the book because we negotiated the price. But I said, I have to send it to CGC because if it came back restored, I didn't want to get stuck for the whole bill. He said, I, I'll back you on it. So when I bought the book at the show, we walked over to CDC together and I dropped it off. So that he now knew what it was legit, that it was what back. is CDC? What is CDC? That's I've, the grading company. Oh, because I, as far as I know, they're the people that take care of you when there's a, yeah. a, a some, 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 right some kind of. It was of, a hard uh, book to find. What? It was a hard book to find. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, but you, but you, but you, but you, what? I can pay for my teeth for that, that book, Alex. Takes care of outbreaks? Yeah, it takes care of outbreaks. Right. Yeah. Alex, I'm thinking my child can get paid with that book. I might have to hock it. <laughs> I'm joking. Yeah, yeah, but no, but I mean, you probably got other books that are worth just as much, right? Yeah, I, mean, I have more. Yeah, I've, I, got, I got the first appearance of the X-Men, of the new X-Men. I can show you that next week. I have to go through my inventory. Isn't this amazing, though? That, that Tony's stuff? definitely a millionaire. Huh? Tony's I don't even know how much my books are worth. Now, where do you keep these things? In a safe or... No, actually, my whole basement when my, my my is all on racks. And What's your address? Books. Okay, and what is your address exactly? Yeah. Checking it's susceptible. Notes. Uh -huh. And what happens? What, what happens if all of a sudden your basement catches fire? Actually, I have insurance. Or floods. Yeah. You have insurance, I, I have insurance on yeah. the comic books. Yeah, a great a collectible insurance. Okay, it's so, not going to be enough to cover my books though. Well, then why don't you get yourself like something that's like a safe or whatever so that if there is a fire, it's the, at least the really expensive ones aren't going to burn up. No, don't say that, Alex. You put a whammy on my giant size X-Men number one. I'll cry. Oh, God. <laughs> Everything's off the floor on racks, so it's like... I mean, I, 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 I saw this documentary, and they had like Action Comics number one, and the guy put it in a safe. You yeah, know, I don't, I don't have anything like that. If you had Action Comics number one and you it didn't put it in a safe. safe, you'd be the stupidest guy I ever knew. No, I'm not that dumb. If I had anything big like that, which I don't, it would be in a safe. Yeah. Like a, a, a hey, bank listen, or something. A thousand, a thousand bucks for one comic book, yeah. and that isn't your most expensive comic book. No, I, I have the Giant says X Men number one is a little more than this. I would yeah. say it's probably like fourteen to twelve. Yeah. But I only have one copy, of course, because it's hard to find. Yeah. Yeah. But also, and I bought this when it wasn't that expensive. Now, you so didn't ke like. collect any other things, did you? Like baseball cards or whatever? Because our friend Shecky. I, 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 I don't know if you know this, but he has a world yeah, class baseball card collection. Yeah, he has a massive collection, Tommy. Yeah. What I you never do with got the gum? into that. I never did either. I never. I was always comic. You know, I I, I was into the gum and I threw away the car. Oh, remember that gum was so rotten. <laughs> I know. My teeth are was, probably screwed up because of that. It was terrible. I mean, for them to even try and sell that as in any way, shape, or form being gum. It had to be stale. I, I had to lose a tooth on that more than once. Yeah. Oh, chipped in the back. I, I, I was went like to the you, dentist yesterday. I oh. went. I went last Saturday. They said everything's looking okay, but they just took another hundred dollars. I, I feel my teeth are shifting, Alex. Do you feel yeah, your teeth are shifting? A hundred dollars each each week. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's exactly. And every month. Oh, well, that's good though. You're pretty soon. You know, you're going to be a real handsome fellow by the time. Uh, I don't know. They're going to have to do more work, I think, because I'm going to. 
If you see these choppy stalactites, they're gonna have to do bonding. He told me there's a tooth here that's gotta come out because I don't know what it's doing here. Still, I told her. Well, it's just hanging out, trying to figure yeah, out where it's, it's like, gonna go. What's going on? There's a party on one side and not the yeah, other. Yeah. But uh, yeah, but at least on, the, you know it's good to get your mouth in shape like yeah, that. Yeah, I'm actually really feeling good. You really should have done this when you were 30, and you would have gotten laid. I mean. I better late than never. I look good in the coffin. At my old but then age. again, oh, you probably you never cared about getting laid, did you? I really don't really think about it. I, <laughs> I care about my comic books. Here we go. He's, I got my comic books. I don't need to get laid. I'm gonna, I'm gonna will. I have stuff willed in. I'm gonna leave stuff to people. <laughs> Are you gonna will some to me? I, w I got something for Shecky in mind already. I didn't I ask about Shecky. I asked about me. You know oh, you'll definitely. Have I need something, something to take care of me in my own. Give me some soundproofing. No, here's, <laughs> it's here's a what, movie poster, actually. Here's what Tony should do. He should sell all his comics and buy Phil's uh, carpet store. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't wish it on him. <laughs> oh. Hey, Alex, I would have a movie poster for you. You you would have a movie yes, poster. Yes, and for I know. Me? And I'll give you one hint. What? My brother bought this for me years ago, and when I first called your radio show, you mm -hmm. used to play the theme to it. What? You, you don't remember, but I do. I, no, I don't remember. It was one. Of the By the way, for people who are watching the TV thing, yes, everybody's frozen right now because this I'll happens tell you, occasionally. Everybody's not know. frozen. Only you. Just only you. me. Yeah. yeah. They, they, they all, all of a sudden they'll start moving. I'll well, drop you a note. I'll let you think. Uh, no, about no, 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 no. You got to tell me what was the what's the poster? What's the movie? The Godfather. Well, the Godfather. I my brother bought me a, a reprint poster. Oh, with a, a reprint? You're gonna give him a reprint? Wait a minute, you're gonna give me a reprint no, of a, a Godfather poster? I mean, I've got it's a poster here. Of ja a, a Jack Benny. It was folded by Mario Puzo. I have a Jack Benny poster over well, I here. I can't be Jack Benny. I'm sorry. I think I got Marlon Brando on, but I don't know if it's legitimate. He said it might be. I have to here, give I'll show you. I'll show you something. Make you drool. I okay? like Jack Benny too. Hold on a second. Something make you drool. What does he got? He's got spokes. That's what he's got. He's going to pull that. I like Jack Benny. He's going to get me jealous here. This is, uh, hold on. Everybody can talk <clears> to each <throat> other. Um, this is, what I did is, uh, there was a guy who was a sponsor of mine who actually uh, sold, uh, anim a uh, what do you call it, animation cells. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And every now and then he would come by and he would give me some. And he gave me this, and this is a very rare cell, and I'll tell you why. Everybody, because it's TV night, you can see Ooh, it. Oh, I like Mickey. That's Mickey Mouse. Whoops. Yeah. Boy, I wish I didn't have all this uh, uh, this reflection so going on. I love that. We can still, still see it. Huh? Yeah. We can still see it. The museum was nice, Alex, there we and go. I went to. There we yeah, go. Nice. I, I'll do it that way. That is way. nice. I like the frame and everything. Okay, but now, you know... There isn't. There's. There are no cells of. Uh, this is a rare cell of Mickey Mouse, because you know what it came from. I was going to say, what is that from? It's from a Fanta commercial in Europe. Really, a soda? It's the only time that Mickey Mouse ever appeared in a commercial. Fanta soda. And yeah, and it's a cell from that. Uh, from that. Oh my, that uh, is very weird. That ad. That. Yeah. So where's the can? Huh? Where's the can of soda? It's right next uh, to the room here. If you want to use it. <laughs> Hold on, I'm going to put my book away. I'll Thank be right you. back. Wait a minute. I'm going, going to go I'm going to go put this away. Hold on a second. I got to put it back up on the wall. Oh, you guys are such good housekeepers. Oh, let me see here. Talk to each other. Oh, Doc, uh, my friend's hey, book party is Saturday, 7:30 at at the Sorry, Art House uh, Hotel. Today at Oh, today is that today already? Six hours. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. In 6 hours. What oh, do you right. say back up? It's going to have a couple of nude models there. Oh, okay. Uh, he he uh, just did a book called uh, Public Bodies, where he went around the world taking pictures of people who posed in uh, public places, like in front of the Louvre and uh, and so forth. And uh, it's a fabulous book, uh, Public Bodies. I also have his private bodies, which he uh, he, uh, he did. But um, so the book uh, opening is uh, tonight for you, okay. seven thirty. And if you want to go, go. Uh, you know, just well, tell him Phil. He knows me very well. It was a little harder for me to get. <laughs> it was a little harder for me to get back up than to uh, take down. Next week, I'll show you the Frito Bandito. But um, anyway, uh, in fact, back of me. Well, no, oh, that's covering it. Okay, well, I have a few other things. Yeah, but not can worth anything. Camera? Uh, can you turn your camera? Oh, is my camera off again? Yeah. Oh, jeez. Yep. Yeah. You guys aren't frozen, though. 
No. <laughs> no we, we, we are able to see a, a one oh. another. Okay. Mm-hmm. There we go. Um, so anyway, so I guess, uh, so I guess Patrick, you're for, for uh, a Sir and I of getting executed. And, uh, huh? Well, actually, um, I'm not in favor of the death penalty on any level. Um, however, I would have liked to have seen when they apprehended that piece of shit motherfucker out of that boat. Yeah. That the police felt a threat <laughs> and shot the fuck out of him while he was in that boat because they saw a gun and uh, just fucking obliterate that piece of shit and I would have aimed for his face and just fucking taken out his head. And then it would have been, well, we feared for our lives. And Well, then, I, I think the punishments should fit the crime and what they should do is strap a backpack to that guy with a bunch of explosives in it and let him run around a field until the thing blows up. Uh, oh, no, thank knowing, you very much, Kim Jong Un. Uh, That's what Kim Jong. What do you say to yourself? Do you wake up in the morning and say, "What would Kim Jong Un do?" Yeah, really, <laughs> my hero. Yeah, your hero. Well, let me tell you something. I you you, you said something earlier that was just classically wrong. And anytime yeah, anybody exactly. says it, they have to be corrected. They're begging to be corrected. Yeah, and that? and and the quest the the point, point was you said well I I would rather execute them than spend all those years spending all that money to keep them in prison. Do you right. know it's cheaper to keep them in prison than to execute them? Not with one well, bullet. No, <laughs> or a backpack filled with no, dynamite. No, what I'm saying is is that but through all the trials and everything and all the legal stuff it takes to get somebody strapped into a chair or onto a gurney or whatever. It is cheaper to keep them in prison for the rest of their lives. Hey, or in Indonesia, when oh. they wait a minute, wait, wait a minute. What were you saying, to Patrick? Or shoot him in that fucking boat. Oh, I see. Okay, all right. Uh, Doc uh, was talking yeah. about some Australians that were uh, convicted in Indonesia for uh, a yeah. drug offense. Yeah, and mm-hmm. uh, you know, uh, they killed the first uh, couple of them pretty quickly. And do, do you think they got an appeal? You know, there's no appeals. You know, you get an appeal, one appeal, boom. Oh, I, you know, it's funny. I was talking about this tonight at dinner with the, uh, with the Indonesian. Sorry, Alex, the Indonesian. The um, the rogue smugglers went through ten years of appeals, all of uh, which were rejected at, out of hand. Yeah. So they yeah. They, they did at least got appeals. Uh, and uh, how much do they spend on them a, a year for uh, uh, upkeep? No, no, I wouldn't. No, they would probably went to. The, I think they went to the worst prison in indonesia where there's like 26 inmates to a cell and there's hardly any running water and everything and so probably not that much and five of them have ibs (laughs) so yeah that's but no uh, here's the here's the deal uh what was i gonna say oh yeah um Oh, you were oh yeah, about we were, we were talking at dinner. Money to house no, no, guys. no. At dinner, a uh, girlfriend and I were talking about the whole execution thing and all of that. And somehow our our discussion, my discuss, our discussion, got to China and to Mao, and how Mao had uh, it, it, what we would call he he was a dictator and he had extreme means to solve problems, like he solved the drug problem by on a Monday saying that if Tuesday we find that you have drugs on you, we're going to shoot you on the spot. And by Wednesday, there was no drug problem left in China. All right, uh, he you know told people he could only have one kid because they already had eight hundred thousand, uh, eight hundred thousand, uh, eight hundred million people living in China, and they couldn't afford to have more people. They have one point three billion now. Um, so he took extreme means to solve these problems, and the question was. Was he right, for instance, in the way he handled the drug problem? And the answer would probably have to be yes, he was right in the way he solved the drug problem because those people were going to die anyway. And maybe he saved a few of their lives by doing this. So, I mean, why did you shake your head no to something which was a solution to a very terrible problem? Because 80% of the people, 80% of the people in China we're on heroin, okay? All right. 80%, or, or, or at least one opiate or another. I think it was opium, actually. Um, 
which is you ever uh, talk to a junkie in in, in New York? You, you think you're gonna if you tell him you're gonna kill him tomorrow? Do you think he'd give up his opium or his it, heroin? It cleared up the problem in China. There was <laughs> with it, within a year there was no drug problem in China any longer. Okay, and so far as um, um, a, a few of the other, uh, for instance, uh, they had a, 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 a ninety percent illiteracy rate in China, and now the illiteracy rate is something like eight percent. Okay, so but he had to take extreme measures to bring this about. Now the question is, is that right? I don't think so. Why? Because uh, I don't believe in a totalitarian government that uh, rules the people like that. You would rather see we're the ones. Okay, that, but uh, you would rather see a, a nation in which eighty percent of the people are hooked on opium. If that's what they want, have at it. Oh yeah, but you're part of the twenty percent that isn't on, on opium, and you got a pretty hard time living with these other eighty percent that are on opium. You you got to know that if you're a leader of a country, you're not going to get your country moving forward until you get rid of that drug problem. And yeah. and how do you get rid of that drug problem? Bad bad opium or bad heroin, you know. But, but that doesn't make sense. You're trying well, to make you, a joke. If 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 you if you well, uh, you, if you, know you taint you, the heroin what you, what you, and you tell people, look, if you use this heroin, you will die. And all the heroin that comes in, you don't know if it's tainted or so, if it's well, not. What's the tainted. difference between that and just shooting them? Well, because then <laughs> it stops the drug problem. No, it, it, the yeah. other way it stops. In, the other yeah. way it stopped the drug no, problem was far less know, dead people. You don't know that the heroin is tainted. You know that there's tainted heroin that has been put into the system, and uh, and you may or may not get it. And if you're gonna if you're gonna use the heroin, there's a really good chance Phil, you're gonna Phil, die. Have you taken you leave? Stop have you taken it. leave? But you don't you don't kill have you the guy. Take, uh, shut up a second. Yeah. yeah. Have you taken leave of your senses? How's that? I mean, I mean, uh, come on. You're talking ridiculousness. I mean, that's not a solution it's just to the as problem. It's ridiculous to, to shoot a no, guy you, because he's an opium addict. Yes, Patrick. Okay, let, let's assume that I agree with that premise. And it, it's a good idea to implement that. Mm -hmm. So now the question is, um, you feel a threat politically mm -hmm. by another party. So now the next thing is, do you threaten to execute everybody who opposes you um, and then you eradicate that so-called pharma and then you don't like fried chicken so anybody that I mean there, there's a point at which as a dictator it does not stop and that's why this sort of thing although in theory is I mean I I see it as something that could work, yes, but where does it stop? Okay, but let's say, let's say, let me, let, yeah. you're going to go to next, I mean, look at Hitler. I mean, his whole idea initially was to get the finances back in order for Germany. That's right. Yeah. And, you know, the, the economy was shit, so we're going to fix that. Well, he did, and, um... It was what about ten years of him ruling, and you know it, it took years and years for the Germans after World War II, after they lost, uh, for many of them to realize that they were under the spell of a dictator. And yeah, he solved some of the so-called problems, but what? It, I mean, to what end? Well, and, no, but here, here's my question: He did it by confiscation of property. And uh, and that's what a lot of uh, uh, the the uh, political uh, pundits or leaders uh, in America want to do is they want to confiscate oh. from those that earned it oh, and God. give it to those that oh, haven't. Oh God, God, and who who are these people? Well, in Germany, it was the Jews. No, oh, well, and I guess Keystone it's the, Pipeline. No, I mean, who are these people in America who want to take from the rich and give to the poor? Guys like Robert Reich. No, uh, uh, he doesn't want that. But what he doesn't want is the rich stealing from everybody. No, okay. He, uh, he feels that there should be a redistribution of funds. I think there should be a redistribution of wealth because it would be better for the economy. Because yeah. it would be, be better money for everybody. 
I but think the fact is when you when you better for me when what what did you say I said, I think we should have it because it'll be better for me. Well, no, but forget about it being better for you. The bottom line is, if you have a greater distribution of the wealth across the population, there are more people spending more money on more goods and services. You are, they are killing the economy with this 92% owning 90% of the money in the, the two, or rather the top 8% owning what? Uh, the, the top 90% of the money. Well, it's that just happens, insane. You take away the incentive for somebody to save and well, how, no, no, no wait a minute. What, what, you take away this insane for greed? There's very little percentage left for taking away incentive. I mean, you're taking incentive away from the, from the people on the lower end from even trying. Uh, you know, uh, that's, and you know, that's you not know the way I look I, at I it. I got to tell you, you're, full of, you're, full of, you're hurt, only hurting yourself with all of this because, believe me, you're not in that fucking club. No, oh, I know. You're not even close to it. I've hung out with a few that yeah, were, and yeah, it was fun. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but what they I'm probably talked about you afterwards. All, all we're yeah, saying course, is, is that in a healthy economy, and uh, somebody correct me if I'm wrong, even Patrick probably wouldn't disagree with me on this one. In a healthy economy, the money is spread across the, the populace. Not equally, but certainly <laughs> more of it is, is being spread around. They, they did that during that just before the housing crisis. They loaned money uh, to anybody who would state uh, their income. Uh, they allowed them to get houses to uh, to, to get yeah the yeah American yeah dream. yeah yeah. And what happened when the banks started going bad? What, what that's what, because they made bad what, loans. They made bad yeah, loans. And, but, what, but, but what happened to them? The money. Did, did we let them? Did we let them They're lose their money? money? No. Yeah. Did we throw any of them in jail? No. We let them get away with it. Yes, Patrick. I don't necessarily agree with you. Um, <laughs> yeah, it it better if if everybody has money, obviously. But um, you know, this isn't Robin Hood shit and that fairy tale bullshit. And whether or not it was historically done, that's fine. That's the past. Um, you know, you, you, let's, let's talk about that whole housing crisis because that is actually what led to me losing my employment. Mm -hmm. I was involved directly with that whole deal, that whole marketplace where subprime loans were being given to people with less than A credit mm -hmm. or even B credit, which was fine because at the time the economy was fairly strong and you supposedly had these loans, the backers, because many people, or people, many of the financial institutions that were doing the loaning did not, them, did not have the capital themselves, but were going through loan houses. Mm -hmm. And some of those loan houses ended up being full of shit that they never actually had that capital to begin with. So when people were becoming underwater or getting their shit foreclosed on, it wasn't the bank or the credit union that were really the bad guys. It was the people that were supposedly backing these loans. And I mean, yeah, I'll tell you for sure, some of the people that I dealt with, mm -hmm. um, there were some people that ended up going to jail over it. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know them personally, per se, but I dealt with that area. And, yeah, but, uh, here, but here's the point I'm trying to make. I mean, I, you know, uh, the, the, the fact of the matter was that he was talking about, you know, people who uh, didn't go to jail for this and that. I'm talking about the people who were the banks. Who didn't? There was only one guy who went to jail, uh, and that was this one guy at one at one mortgage house. I can't remember what his name was, and he wasn't the biggie. He they just served him up as the sacrificial lamb, and, um, and Madoff, which everybody likes to point out, that was a, a Ponzi scheme. That was a Ponzi scheme. Had nothing to do with it. Nobody went to jail over that. And also these these banks were get, were bailed out much, but but you know they don't they weren't bailing out the people. They weren't bailing out the people who were losing their homes like crazy. 
You know, so where where was the emphasis? The emphasis was, let's save the banks. You know, my idea is, hey, you fucked up your bank. It doesn't work. Let it collapse. Mark had a... Too big to fail. Yeah, too big to fail. Uh, Yeah, Uh, Mark Green. Yeah, first, and I then, then, know uh, quite a bit then Patrick. I, I'm actually an appraiser here in Columbus, so I was I had a front row seat on this thing, mm-hmm. and and this notion that banks were forced to make loans is totally false. That they wanted to. That, that never. I mean, there there were some some urban neighborhoods where the, where the government wanted to stimulate housing, mm-hmm. but the notion that the government made made banks loans that they didn't want to make is not true. They allowed them to make the loans uh, that no, were more the, questionable. The banks wanted to make the loans, Phil. Yeah, they were making a lot of money. They they did it because they they it wasn't their money, mm-hmm. and they and and they made and they made commissions on these loans and then sold the loans to somebody down the road. So right. they were loaning money that wasn't theirs. So they had no risk, and that was the problem. And then and then and then additionally, what happened is the the ratings agencies. Which, which are supposed to be the policemen of this thing, um, labeled poor quality loans as good loans. Mm-hmm. And they sold them to investors around the world as, 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 as good investments when in fact they weren't. And it was and a tr- trusted it was agencies it was that labeled those loans. Where are they? Right? Where's trusted agencies that labeled, well, mislabeled they, uh, those uh, loans? Hold on a second. No, not agencies, yeah. they're private companies, s and yeah. Moody's, these are private right. companies that, that, that give ratings to, to bonds, and they lied. They flat out lied. Didn't they, about also, what, didn't they also take all, the, all, these, all these loans and bundle them, almost like you bundle hamburger, you know, where the, where the meats come from 20 different cows or 100 different cows. Oh, yeah. Bundle just... them and then sell those to these mortgage houses all over the world, and especially in New York. And... Um, the, the fact of the matter was, these people who were having their homes foreclosed, if they had simply asked, "Show me the, show me the mortgage," the bank might not have been able to produce it. No, they couldn't produce it. There was, there was, they, 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 totally, totally, they were totally fraudulent in all the processes of this. Yeah. Well, I, and, I bought a house. Was, wait, 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 hold on. There was, there was, te- there was emails found from from yeah. Moody's and S and P of of these people saying. I hope I'm out of here before this whole thing comes apart. So they did it knowingly and willingly. Yeah, let me. But let we me, can't admit that because that means the free, the free market system failed. Let me uh, go to Patrick because he's holding his hand up, and when he holds it up that long, I get to worry about it because I don't want you to lose the use of your hand too. Yes, Patrick. Well, and, and I do agree with you as far as the bailout. I, I never agreed with bailing out GM. Um, you know what? This is a free market. There's a capitalist society. If you can't fucking make it, then it's the next one that will, and that should have never happened. Um, well, the we government, the government, government doesn't run around bailing out the small businessman. If no. if if filth goes out of bit, has problems tomorrow, the government isn't going to come along like they did to these these. Uh, mortgage companies and say, "Hey, Phil, uh, here's some money. Let's help you stay in business." I and and as much as I am far from being, I, I mean, even saying the word socialist makes me want to vomit. But uh-huh. I, I would well, rather. Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Would you do me a favor and say the word socialist because I want to see what it looks like when you vomit? Yeah. It'll sound really good too. Mm. So <laughs> I would have rather have seen. And this is, in all seriousness, rather than bailing out GM and mortgage houses, I would have rather have seen the government take that money and help people with their mortgages and help people pay off their car loan or get them to where they were stabilized. Because to me, if they would have done that, then those same people would still be in those houses today, making those payments, making the car payment, making the house payment, and probably, even if they would have lost their jobs, there would have been enough where they would have been able to negotiate them. And many people do, especially like with credit unions, uh, many people have gone unemployed. Mm. 
you can negotiate mm. more with a, with a credit union than with a bank. Um, I think it would have been a better deal. Let me let me ask Doc something. What time is it, Doc, to begin with out there in Australia? 1.30 p.m. Uh, what? Jeez. 12.30 p.m.? 1.30 so in the afternoon. And he's yawning yeah. already. On the 6th. <laughs> you are yawning. I'm, I, I, what, do you work at night? No, uh, I think the conversation it probably doesn't hit home because... I'll... I used to work in finance yeah. well a long time ago. And right during the subprime problem, yeah. which caused this, we kind of caught the flow-on effect for that. So I'm sitting here going, I'm like, yeah, this sounds familiar. Now, how much did it affect you guys in yeah. Australia? Um... Not as much, but that's because the government at the time had a massive budgetary surplus that we were able to ride it out with. Mm -hmm. But um, because I was working in finance and a lot of our in a lot of our investments were in American banks that invested in American infrastructure that didn't pan out, we saw a lot of that flow onto us where our yeah. our, our bank's profits started collapse, started making, started coming down, and started and started suffering because of this global economy that we've created mm -hmm. well now that you live in uh, 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 let me ask you about australia is uh, uh, would you consider it a socialist country would you consider it a capitalistic country or what would you consider it if you could mix the two of them together i would say that so it's a nice it's a nice mixture of the two yeah like we do have a lot of capitalist virtues and values and stuff but we also have all the socialized issues of you know public health care and well, you know something? I don't know why we always say that a country is socialistic because it has public health care. I mean, uh, the British are hardly socialists, you know, and yet they have public health care. Isn't public health care just a matter of common sense? Mm, it's you, true. You know, it's, I, don't, I don't know that that's a political issue of left or right. Uh, because, uh, I mean, what? It, it, Wait. Is, hmm? We make everything a political issue left to right in the United States. Yeah. In in Canada, I know there's plenty of people who are anti-abortion. Yeah. But it's just not a political issue up there. It's just a personal preference either Choice. way. Yeah. I, I well, think like the Republicans like, took a stand. Like, why, why do we Why do we say that anything that's for the common good, we use the word socialist, and therefore that turns out into something bad, when it's in fact something good, you know. That's what I don't. That's it's it's a stigma on the word. It's like nigger. It's just it's a word with a stigma attached to it. See, here's the thing. Exactly. I, what we're really yeah. talking about is what's good for people, not not um, <clears throat> political structures. You and know. things that will cost money. Well, the sure. Yeah. They don't like they don't like things that cost money. They want so you, you attach socialists to it, knowing that you know it'll cost you know six billion dollars to overhaul the health system. Oh, that socialist people are like oh no. We don't want that. But Republicans even, even want though it it tanks. Benefits, even though it benefits the people who are opposed to it. That's that's the crazy part. Well, you know, I, the, the one thing, I think I have to tell you something, Phil, that, that kind of bothers me about you. <laughs> A lot of things bother me about you, but <laughs> uh, is that and, and every time we have these conversations, whether it's about the police or whether it's about the, the, uh, health care or whatever, you, oh. nev you never once modify it by maybe being that uh, ha having that rare opinion every now and then about something that's that's to the left i mean i patrick occasionally does you know i've never heard you say well maybe i'm wrong or maybe i should look at that again well, uh, you're I so stoic in. you're so stoic it's like you got the handbook yeah. and now you're going for your cup scout badge i got you an know opinion. he's just you know? stubborn but like i told you i voted for jerry brown you know and uh twice so, you know, and that was I in the same year. That there's a uh, <laughs> that there's something uh, that's that's going that's a benefit to society, and that uh, I think is the right thing to do. It's not a matter of right and left. I just I, I've said it before. Uh, if you uh, read uh, um, Longfellow's uh, uh, compens uh, 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 this compensation. Uh, uh, essay, the essay on compensation. Mm -hmm. You'll understand where I'm coming from. Yeah, and when did he write that exactly? Yeah, no one 150 reads. years ago. 150 years ago. Do you think it necessarily yeah. applies today? Absolutely. Oh, okay. Here's, here's a good That's example. That's the problem with this country. Here's a good example of why this is such a phony argument. There's a governor of Florida named Rick Scott, and he mm. is a right wing Republican, as Patrick probably knows. He is one of the governors that. that that refused to accept 
the Medicaid expansion. Well, now, last week, he went to the, to the federal government to say he needs money to pay his hospitals for uninsured care. So the government told him, forget about it. So now Florida risks going into default because they don't have enough money to pay this, these hospitals for the uninsured. Because, because, Patrick, because um, Rick Scott took this Patrick. political position to, to refuse the Medicaid expansion. So therefore they're being held hostage because uh, they, they didn't want to take and I, I don't know no, the that, whole story. Well, why do you turn it always into something well, like they're being held hostage? No, hostage. Here's one. Here, 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 they here's didn't, they the didn't simple, take this deal, no, the so simple, now they don't get the, the money. The simple truth oh, is, they Phil, take Obamacare. It, they were an it, he was an idiot not to take Obamacare. He didn't take it. They said, okay, the states have the right way to admit it to say no. Then all of a sudden he finds himself in trouble. And he says, oh, well, I want it now. And they went, hey, the... the the term, the, the time to come in on that deal has expired. Okay. Why don't you just say, say well, now I, see, I don't think why in this case, such a good deal. It, 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 and forget, I, I'll tell you forget why. about Obama. You guys, it, forget about just, Obamacare. The, look, look, the trouble with Obamacare is he's pushing health insurance. No, no, listen to me on this. It's not even health insurance. What this is what happens. I'm going to give you two instances. Uh, uh, on my own instance, my uh, my um, uh, insurance premium. Uh, they said uh, whatever it was that I had didn't fit into the Obamacare, so there, uh, not the Obamacare, but uh, uh, Kaiser's uh, thing. So my insurance went from 562 for mm -hmm. pretty much the same coverage. It went to 918 or something like that so a month. Now, that was because of Obamacare. The only difference, you know, I mean, it would have gone up 50, 60, 80 bucks. If uh, you know, if it was just a regular, you know, the regular deal, because every year it went up. But because of Obamacare, it went up about forty percent. Now, uh, those people that have been taking Obamacare, wait, 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 especially wait, 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 in California, let, let me finish this. No, one. no, but you, you've told us this they, story eight thousand times, okay, till I'm tired what of about hearing the it. People that took Obamacare and then all of a sudden they saved a few hundred bucks a month on their insurance, but then the government sent them a ten ninety nine. Uh, uh, and and told them that they were responsible look, for those look, taxes. Look, Obamacare is is not great, and the reason there's no it, free lunch. Uh, hold on a second. There is a free yeah. lunch. It's called yeah. socialized medicine. It's called uh, single payer. It's called you paid your taxes, and now we're going to take care of you. That's what it's called. The taxes it, it's, are there for a purpose. Hold on. Oh, gee, will you shut up for a second, Phil? Wouldn't that purpose right. be to improve? Yeah, the that quality purpose might be a good thing for once. You know, the trouble with Obamacare is it, it's a bad idea for one simple reason. It was the only thing he could get past because what he, all he could get past was what amounts to uh, 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 insurance health reform. In, uh, health insurance reform that was is basically what Obamacare is I, and he couldn't get the he couldn't get what he wanted to get passed because the Republicans were standing in his way when you know that an insurance company backs Obamacare you know there's something in it for the well, insurance there, there were certain parts Republican of Obamacare ideas, yeah. that I felt were good uh, which was uh, you know uh, having your um, uh, dependents up to the age of 26. You didn't have to. You didn't have to do Obamacare to make that a law. No, because that was the reform, and I thought that that was good. Also, uh, you know, if you have uh, pre, uh, if you existing have existing uh, conditions, that you could also could have been a, a, a law passed by Congress and exactly. didn't have to be Obamacare. But right. the fact is that what he really wanted to get probably was some kind of uh, single payer health system in this country, and he knew that that Republican, those Republican assholes, would never let him have it. No. Okay, uh, you know the the couple of things that were attached to it that I liked, I think are good. You're right, it didn't necessarily need to be yeah. uh, a, a complete revamp of the system. Well, hold on a second, Phil. Uh, Pat, Matt, are you still there? Matt? I think we lost Matt. Yeah, his picture's there. But... Yeah, his picture's there. Anyway, but... anyway my, po my point was that the, the governor of Florida wants the federal money. He just doesn't want it under the Obamacare label. And that's that's just stupid. That's what it well, is. let's not call it Obamacare well, that? because that's a prejudicial. Well, well, what other reason is there? Obamacare is a prejudicial term that was thought up by Fox. Okay. Yeah, but he liked uh, it. it. Well, he he said he did, but the fact is, it's the Affordable Care Act. Okay, 
And I think at least we should have the dignity to call it that. Because that, that, that more aptly describes yeah, it. It wasn't it's, affordable for me. It almost doubled my, uh, all my right. uh, so, rate. All so, right. Uh, so, you know, so uh, you probably well, ha- it, had a way well, you, you could have gotten it, Phil. Ch- what? What? You can uh, afford I, it, Phil. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I mm. believe me when I this all make this, a payroll uh, uh, or yeah, all of those things. Yeah, I yeah. can't afford this, it. I uh, just uh, do uh, it. Uh, um, Doc, does all this kind of sound? Are you, you're you're in the medical profession, aren't you? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Does this all sound silly to you? Yes, it does. Yeah. And, why is and that? would you please explain to Phil why it sounds silly? Because the fact you, that because, um, because you, you because can't you, overhaul the system because it wouldn't it would cause more harm than good, or the fact that overall this whole issue of uh, health of standardized healthcare and you know payer fee healthcare and all and a public health system is so diametrically foreign to the Ameri- the way the American psyche has become that it would be like trying to push shit up water uphill. <laughs> well, this country was based on the fact that the government was there to supply certain things that could not be supplied in the in the private sector. And that's the military, care. fix the roads, the libraries, and, and so forth. And uh, it wasn't here to invade uh, our personal lives. And, uh, you know, we have a system, how, how, how a is, healthcare how is pay, system. How is paying your health care, how is having a single-payer health care, it's uh, just how's that invading taxes, your the more you how, the how, more you give the government hey, doc, doc what are you, how much you paying in taxes doc for your uh, health care it's a, it's a negligible amount that we don't it comes out pre uh, pre uh, pre tax so we never yeah. actually see how much we're taxed but things about so, and you seem to be living pretty nice life with your free health care you're not going broke or anything right not 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 no, no. Also, 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 you're, so you're surviving with you with, know that uh, that, you're that, not that under that, a tyrannical uh, government yeah right? we all know what a hellhole australia is and how you economically they only they're have falling 21 apart 21 million people <laughs> Oh, you know, geez. we've got 225 million people, 250 that million people. That makes it better because no, but we got a lot of people who aren't right, contributing. Right. We've been joined by Jason, by the way. Let me say that. Hi, Jason. Hey, how's it going? Hey, do you have a camera there tonight? Oh, you don't see me? Yeah, turn it on and off, and I'll probably then see you. Uh, 225 it million people on. paying taxes for yeah. the. No, yeah. we don't have 225 million paying. Hey. Uh, yeah, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay, 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 Phil, you've been, you've had, you've, you've hogged enough of the time here. Hey, hey. Let me, let me let then people then like Jason say something. Comment. Yeah. You know, there, there's actually kind of a two-parter. One, the rest of the world has universal health care, so why are we right? And the rest of the world is wrong. The second part, you know, it, it just, oh, crap, man. I it's a free yeah. <laughs> But, you know, it, if the rest of the world is doing it, and they're wrong, but we're right. You know, it, it just it kind of kills me. And you know, you you mentioned about the uh, government shouldn't be butting in or whatever. But if one person can't do something, that's what the government is for. And we basically already had that type of situation with our uh, healthcare that we have right now. It's just we're letting private industry make money off of it. That's so why not have the government do the exact same thing, but not make money off of it, and then it works out for everybody. Uh, because unfortunately, you've got such a, a a much lower percentage that is contributing, and a much higher percentage. No, you that is don't, taking, because you make everybody pay sustain. taxes. You make everybody pay Every, taxes. And everybody's pay for a it socialist. Like the rest of the world. Look, Jay, everybody's a socialist until you run out of money. Then all of a sudden, how are you going to run uh, out of money? Uh, he heard that somewhere, by the way. I've heard that. It's like you know, you it's know, one of those. It's the same thing that you guys talk about with the Social Americans. Security being a poxy scheme. You know, it is. Mm-hmm. And it's only going to be a Ponzi scheme that Ponzi, fails. Ponzi, Ponzi, I'm sorry. Ponzi scheme. <laughs> Ponzi. So I, I'm sorry. I was, and and a Ponzi scheme keeps things together. Uh, and it's only going to be a Ponzi scheme if we stop having kids. You know, as long as you keep on producing, yes, it's going to be a Ponzi scheme that keeps on rolling and keeps on doing what it's supposed to do. Everybody talks about how Social Security is going to go bankrupt in so many. Mm-hmm. It's supposed to. It's not supposed to have a surplus. The yes. surplus right now is supposed to be for the baby boomers who are paying for themselves and paying for the generation before. It's supposed to be money comes in and goes out at the same rate. It's not supposed to have a surplus. Uh, it's supposed to, but it doesn't. It's, and no, you know why it doesn't? Because you little surplus. motherfuckers stole that money. That's <laughs> why. And none of you will die. 
Huh? It's supposed what, to what, what you say, what, during your generation only. You got After you got talk show hosts living to be seventy five. If that you know, it, <laughs> that's the problem. And he's, he's still drawing down on the system, you know. But hey, look, I'm I'm, I'm sucking every dime saying. out of it I can. I put it in. Hey, yeah, yeah. Right. Australia had overhaul is overhauling our social security nature because our population is so small, but. The, pop, the, the ratio of people who are at retirement age, so over 75s, is getting so large that there's actually more people who are receiving Social yeah. Security than the community. And, uh, the the and you said problem. that they're going to have to reassess. Uh, Doc, you, Doc said yeah, the other night that they were going to have to reassess their Social Security system because the, the drain on the system, you've got people living to be 92 on average. And yeah, but you know why they're the living. You know why so they're great. living to be ninety-two. Tell them, Doc. Well, that sounds like a great problem. To have. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And we did the have problem that problem that, I mean, already. What? We had that problem here already, and I actually I think that was like one of the things that I, I believe it was under Reagan. So please forgive me if I'm wrong. That Reagan actually did right is you, Bill, the baby boomer generation. You're paying for your parents, and you're paying for yourself. Once that happens where the population shift is over, I just need to pay for the generation before me. And if the population gets under control, the generation after me just pays for me. You don't have to have the surplus. The money comes in and goes out at the same rate. There's never a surplus. And that's what Al it's supposed to be. Alex, you may know the statistic on this, but you know when Social Security was first introduced, uh, I'm guessing, let's say there was 16 workers to every one worker take, that was taking benefits. Now, uh, there are uh, f uh, uh, one worker uh, to every uh, four workers that are taking benefits. So, so you know, it, it's... Uh, for every worker the that's working, there is money going into the Social Security system. And the fact is that if I think of all the money I put into Social Security over all the years that I've lived to this ripe old age of 75, if I, if, if I think about that, uh, I have paid more money than I will ever be able to get In back. Today's dollars. So there is a great there is a great surplus out there that was stolen from by the w. by the Bush administration to finance a war that uh, that that if we are having uh, facing a deficit at any point with Social Security, it's not the fault of the system. It's Doesn't the fault of the thieves fault at our it's doors. It's where the system is today. And look, when you twenty years ago. Uh, today, you paid a maximum of nine or ten thousand dollars into Social Security. Twenty years ago, you paid maybe two thousand dollars into Social Security. Uh, years before that, you might have paid seven hundred. All I'm into saying is, wait a minute, hold on a second. Do, Doc's got all Doc's all got his hand up. Don't, you don't want to keep doing the same thing over and over yeah. again. We just had a, 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 a national defense budget approved in, the, in our Congress, mm -hmm. $611 billion. That's four times the, the size of the number two nation, which is China. This is just a matter of national priorities. We prioritize yeah. war over taking care of the people okay. in this country. Doc's got That's his hand choice. up, and then, uh, then Jason's the got his hand up. Yes. The reason why the government's having to, uh, in Australia, is having to overhaul our social security nature is because when it was first instituted, we didn't have superannuation and things like that. So your 401k and things like that, we didn't have those things. So the government supported retirees. But now, since the you know the 60s, uh, the 70s and 80s have come through, where it's been mandatory that everyone has to have a 401k. Even people working casual part time have to have a superannuation. Mm -hmm. They've had to over, um, overhaul it because it means now that these people are now actually having more income on their own for when they retire and less having to rely on the government to support them. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, I think, Jason. I think it was Roosevelt who said something about how don't trust people who say, I don't believe in this program, but elect me and give me the money and I'll make it work better. Yeah, somebody, somebody's, we're, we're getting a slap back. Hold on a second. Me turn down the sound and bring it back up again and see if there's any slapback. No, it's gone. Uh, um, um, there's always a way of getting rid of that. Um, let me let me ask uh, Matt here something because Matt's been a little quiet tonight. And sure. I, you know, uh, uh, well, how do you do? You have health insurance? I do. Uh -huh. How do you do? You have from work or what? I do. I pay zero dollars a month. Really? What kind of nice yeah. boss do you have there? 
a good one. I, I mean, I guess uh, since being young and stuff, but once uh, once the old ball and chain gets on, it it goes up to uh, what is it, 120 a paycheck, so 240 a month. Yeah, 240 a month. 20 something years old. That's all it costs. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You know. But if, I go to the doctor it, once a year. Yeah. Well, if the, if the ball if checkup. if the if the ball and chain. Uh, yeah. Did, right. you have, women, does she does she time. does she work or is she uh, she does does she have a health insurance where she's at uh, she does not she's still covered under her parents oh I see okay yeah see that's the problem if she were covered uh, you know then it would be cheaper all the way around but once she marries you I think are you already it, married no I think you get okay. some leeway I'm gonna try she to push still that has to pay a family rate right now he might be able to get the same thing but you'll just have to pay actually like an earned income tax on it yeah but me and my uh, wife originally we actually had a domestic partnership and I got her health insurance under mine but uh, I had to pay income tax on it yeah hmm. now when are you when are you gonna get married Matt we haven't asked you that August August you're getting married oh. <laughs> Phil, <laughs> uh, <laughs> get a prenup. Yeah. <laughs> she's the breadwinner, though. Isn't yeah, she? she is. She is. Well, yeah, no, she... We, we make about the same. Uh, yeah. 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 Hopefully, hopefully, I get a, a raise coming up soon, and uh, maybe a promotion. There's something called let's, having let's, kids. Let's, let's put a little warmth in. Uh, the, let's add a little warmth to the show tonight. So, what is it you love about her? Um, she just makes me happy. Uh, She's a good gal, you know. Uh, Ice cream makes me happy. And, uh, <laughs> She's a good gal. Uh, That's why you're type two. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and that's why. Yeah. She a good cook? Uh, no, she doesn't cook. Mm. We both don't cook. How long have you known her? Uh, six years. Wow. So it's a, yeah, it's, it's good. And uh, yeah, you, on the other hand, we got Doc here who kept referring. You're married, right, Doc? No. No. He's okay. But he refer, referred to his partner. Uh, his partner as his partner the other night, and usually in America, when they say that, you go, "Oh, well, I guess he's gay." <laughs> you know? In Australia, we have we can have domestic uh, the same like domestic living situation. So it might she's my we're legally de facto. Do you have you, any names for for uh, part, uh, gays at all? Like you know, they're my uh, chubby or something like that. You guys always have funny names. Oh, you mean what? 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 The, what? The Australian <laughs> term is? Like, like, okay, so I was, oh. get, I was looking at birds. Well, let me put it this way: uh, I think I can translate into a, into Australian uh, yeah, uh, for you, Doc. He's actually asking, "What do you call somebody you're fucking?" Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> That's the same other. thing you guys call your people you're copulating with. Oh, okay, well, we we booty call is usually a good one for us. Yes, yeah. Jason. Hey, and one thing why Doc is here, I wanted to let him know that I learned from my seven-year-old. Australia is not a continent. It's called Oceania. Wait a minute. The, the, the technical <laughs> continent is Oceania. Atlantis is a continent. Why can't Australia be a continent? Hey, listen, you're Oceania you're you're you're, you're in Oceania continent, Phil, is and we don't. Phil, Australia is not. Phil, I learned that from my seven-year-old. Phil, you're in continent, and we don't. Uh, you know. <laughs> well, Join no, that that there. does bring up something. Uh, yeah. I, I would ask Matt, but what pet names do you have for each other, like? And you're canoodling and whatnot. Do you have any special canoodling? Pet names? This is the guy with the Muhammad Ali poster over his bed. <laughs> wow. <Yeah. laughs> canoodling? What do you do when you canoodle? Uh, what do you call each other when you canoodle, Matt? Fucking? No, no. What do you call each other? Oh, oh. Uh, pet names. Babe. Babe? Babe. Yeah. Dames. Yeah, she, my, my I wife has, my, yeah. my wife, when we canoodle, has a good pet name for me. It's get off of my hair. <laughs> um, Your elbows oh, in my, my neck. Hip. Uh, on, my, on my hip? <laughs> right. Oh, no. I, wait, wait, where's the ointment? Yeah, yeah. He doesn't need ointment. He's got the, the, the uh, Vegemite. Yeah. <laughs> Hurry up. Give me some more Vegemite. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. I thought there was going to be another Vegemite you know, challenge people, tonight. You know, people use uh, a food for for sexual pleasure. Do you guys in Australia ever use Vegemite in a sexual way? You get Vegemite and you, you try. 
but <laughs> yeah, but, but you know, if it if you want, if, if you're thinking about a, if you're there's thinking about there's putting there's a Dan on your penis, you're definitely not going to get blown. He'll look like <laughs> that Muhammad Ali poster <laughs> over his bed. What is yeah, it? I gotta, I gotta do something about Muhammad oh, Ali. Oh, there, four, 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 Is that wow. you, now? Is that four or five dollars equivalent to four or five in America? No, it's about seventy five cents. Australian, on Australian, but you know how you paid fourteen dollars for your. Home? I paid fourteen bucks for my Vegemite. Yeah, four dollars and five cents, and that is the equivalent American of what? About three something. Twenty five percent less. Twenty to twenty five percent. Wow. So uh, American dollars are worth, uh, se- oh. it costs you 75 cents American to every one dollar. You see, they uh, get, they've got socialized medicine over there. They've got, uh, they've, uh, they, they've got no, uh, um, we found out tonight, no um, uh, death, penalty. death penalty. And on top of that, they've got uh, Vegemite hey, at a Maryland's reasonable no price. <laughs> and my health insurance is only $175 a year. Oh, how, how old are you, Doc? Twenty nine. Twenty nine, and and you visit Wait the doctor often? Yeah. Not really. We're, we're, Australians are generally. In but he is in the medical field. Yeah. So he but visits them pay. all the time. Yeah. And is your your wife's in the medical field too, right? And not is your wife, your your partner. His partner. <laughs> yeah. He, he's God, not. she's she's a we're we're common we're uh, common law marriage. So technically. We've been together long enough that we do qualify as a married couple. In other words, if I called her your wife, uh, technically I'd be right. Yes. Yes. And is you, is and, common law the same in Australia? Is it seven years? Oh, by the like, way, look, the we've we've hit the we've uh-huh. hit we've hit the big oh. matzo ball. It is See? now a uh, oh. uh, it, it's a uh, wow. full house. It's a full house. It's a it's a minion. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, you've got about like, seven minutes left, and uh, yeah, I know. you know there, there's still. Say that. But Alex, I wanted to ask you something real fast. I'm sorry I'm interrupting. Yeah. But when is um, uh, Periscope going to go onto Android? Because I have Android and I. Can't I hope Periscope. never. Week, I think I think Periscope's the biggest waste of time I've ever seen in my life. But I wanted to see um, your you know anti Periscope thing that you put on and stuff like so that. Why should you really allow you taking a dump? What? Right. Right. <laughs> well, I never take a dump on it. Although I'm thinking that maybe I, I should you. eventually. You know, I I saw it, the tweet. I'm it, pretty no, sure that's what, what it said. It's my toilet show, uh, and I do it while I'm sitting on the can. Uh, you can always and, flush and then you know watch the submarine sink. <laughs> I am. Yeah. You know, I'm not going to do that. There, there. Now there, and I mentioned this before. There was a podcast I used to listen to about, and and it was a guy who an did a pod, an audio podcast. While he was sitting on a toilet, taking a shit, and he's a real smart guy. He did movie reviews and stuff like that. But it got to the point where you knew this guy, and you wanted to, you were curious to know how healthy of a, a shit he was taking. So, you know, it was it was a great show. He had a big following, and uh, you know, his slogan was he's he's never going to be number one, but he's always pushing for number two. He's always pushing so. for number two. Let me yeah. a- let me ask you this little question: Who just played the toilet? I did. Phil, Phil is I using sound him. effects. I, I warned you against that. <laughs> hey, but yeah, it was timely. You, it was timely. Huh? It was very good, Phil. Yeah. Thank you, yeah. Alex. You had a question for me. I did. You asked about my partner, and oh yeah, she, is she's in the medical profession too. Yes. Yeah. So the two of you are. Uh, uh, do, do you ever go up to each other and go, "Does this look infected to you"? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Usually ends up with, will you go to a doctor? <laughs> <laughs> How good is yeah, the doctor? So they, they have all the doctor outfits and everything. So when they when they play doctor, they can uh, they have all the equipment. Yeah. Do you if ever, you ever work in health, you know that the minute you get out of that uniform, you autoclave yourself. Dan, why is your camera shaking so much? What? <laughs> so is my Dan, camera shaking? Your camera. Uh, Some of the questions you're asking. <laughs> uh, my, 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 my question would be, uh, <laughs> does, your, does your wife ever wear a naughty nurse costume at Halloween? She did once when she was in uni. French <laughs> maid. <laughs> never since. Now they go for the French maid uh, look yeah. now. These are the last five minutes of the program questions. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> it was real serious there for a while. Oh yeah, we were very very serious tonight, 
And oh, oh uh, Damien. And by the way, I, I vote for Damien tonight for best mood lighting. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I have I a question to, for uh, Damien. Yeah. Congratulations uh, to Damien. Yes. That's and, little, and, when's that start? Uh, uh, right after uh, uh, the closest uh, after uh, after Memorial Day. Okay. Memorial so Day is the twenty fifth. Oh, is it? And so oh, then, the, oh, the next so, no, Monday after that it, would be June first. Okay, it's going to be yeah, June first. What's, what's your theme? Uh, he's doing. The, he's doing the exchange. It's, it's got I'm the, the exchange. Microphone. Yeah, oh, it's the exchange. Okay. You know. Uh, you don't have I mean, he'll do it in his own way. For... We're not uh, going to have him do it necessarily like it's Jim did. Start at nine. The exchange. No, it's going to start at uh, at uh, nine. Well, nine thirty Eastern. Well, what I meant was what kind of topics. You know that that kind of thing. Eddie, it's work on what kind of topics are here? You know. Yeah. One minute. The same thing is kind of the same thing as the exchange, although a little more open the exchange than the exchange. I'm not going to. Um, force people to go for a specific topic if they don't want to talk about it. I'd rather have callers, yeah. frankly. Yeah, 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 I like <laughs> and that. if there's something that somebody wants to talk about that's timely, that's like in the news or something that I haven't thought of, you know, I'd much rather talk about that anyway. Yeah. So, um, you know, I'll bring up like a default topic if that I'll talk about if nobody calls. Yeah. I'll have something to talk about. But, you know, it'll be really open. Yeah, the greatest, and, you the, know, kind of like yeah. I'm a blend between the exchange and the public. House. Yeah, well, the, way, the best way to, to, to describe it is that uh, uh, if you have those nights where nobody calls, that's when you'll really learn how to do radio. Well, yeah. I was see. just going to ask your USB uh, microphone that you have up on Facebook, does that sound anything near like the microphone you have now? It was the one I was using previously. Oh, okay. Never mind. Oh, that's a sweet one. <laughs> this one sounds great, Damien. Sounds yeah. terrific. Sounds this better. one yeah. looks sounds great, good. too. I love the look of it. Yeah, it, it was a beautiful looking microphone. I like the look of it. What is it again? What brand? It's an MXL. An MXL. And it's not a USB. It's a... No, no. Yeah. Oh, it's powered. It's powered. How much? I got it for 40 bucks on That's eBay. good. Wow. wow. Phil. Wow. Yeah. Which is yours? Yeah. <laughs> Phil, Phil. Uh, I got it on eBay for 225 I think. Bill sold his house for his all of right, his equipment. Right. He had a $500 <laughs> one tonight. Well, yeah, I got to take that back tomorrow. Oh, I was just going to say, did you return that yet? That tomorrow it goes back. Don't Phil sounds $180 better than me, right? He, yeah, he nah. sounds $180 better than me. I, I don't have the voice. Damien's got the voice. <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. Turn on your echo effect. Yeah, I can do that. No, I, we, 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 I, I said that we were looking for people to do programming, and he stepped up to the uh, the plate, and uh, uh, I said, hey, you know, not Great a bad choice. idea. <laughs> you know, not a bad idea. I did as well, but we couldn't figure out the time zones. Well, it, it's going to be, it'll be, it'll be, I, I go ninth, I do everything Eastern Daylight Time. I was arguing with uh, Jim about this yesterday. Because he did a promo for Miranda, and he gave her time, but it was the the Pacific time. Western time. Yeah, Western and I, time. I just said, if you say that, say Pacific time, so everybody knows. Hey, everybody, Western. God, uh, too bad uh, we, 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 we've got a full house, all things considered. Thank you, Damien. Thank you, Thank Jason. You. Always great to see you here, Phil. You're, Good night. Uh, you're uh, always a pleasure, even though you're the world's most likable asshole. Uh, <laughs> Matt Brewer, thank you. Uh, Mark Green, always a pleasure. Doc, love your infusion into this program. It's been, it's a pleasure. It makes it truly international. Um, uh, now, yeah, I hope you call my show. Yeah, call his show. He, yeah, uh, Dan, thank you. Charlene, thank you. Hey, little Timmy. <laughs> Nice having you here, Patrick. Uh, and also, who do we, else do we have? We had uh, Tony. Uh, Tony, and uh, that Jason. Was, and well, no, Jason. Oh, did I say you Jason? Yeah, you said. I don't remember. I I, I, I I try to mention everybody by looking at the pictures, and then sometimes they move, and then I lose some. And I don't want anybody to be upset. Anyway, <laughs> everybody, have a nice weekend. This has been a good, you know this week has been a perfect week. Every show has been terrific. Thank you Think for about doing this it. next week. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Good night, Alex. Good, Good night, night, everybody. Uh, I'm Alex night. Bennett. That's it for our program for this week. We'll see you again next week on Monday. Uh, in the meantime, uh, let me just remind you, as always, uh, that if you see her, well, stay tuned for Jim. He's next over this most of the same the same station, and uh, he, which is Gabnet. They tune in 
partner. Uh, and uh, it's a great show. And I'll see you again on Monday. In the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Um, anyway, thank you so much, TV audience, for watching, and uh, we'll see you again next week. Bye.